Okay, great. So hello, everyone. It seems like the technology is working. Um, thanks so much for joining this Hangout today. Um, my name is Caroline Gaert, and I'm Partnerships Manager at Ashoka UK, and I will be chairing this session today. So Ashoka is a global network of social entrepreneurs, uh, supporting over 3,000 of them across 85 countries. And we work on three key areas at the moment. So firstly, we find and support these social entrepreneurs um, all across the world. Then secondly, we work to reimagine education and equip young people with the skills to succeed in a changing world. And then thirdly, we work to create alliances between businesses, social sectors, and government. And this is why we're here today. So thanks to our partners at the Zermatt Summit Foundation, Fondation Guillier, DPD, and Boringer Ingelheim, we launched a pan-European competition to find and support co-creators. Co-creators are people who are bridging the gap between social and business sectors. Today, we would like to explore the power of these new alliances and discuss the challenges that they face and hear about success stories. So on the panel here today, and please give us a wave uh, when you hear your name, I have Jean-Christophe Loger, who is the Director of Social Innovation and Ecosystem at Danone, and he will bring a corporate perspective to the discussion. Then I have Miguel Neiva, the founder of Colorad, and Ashoka Fado, who will be talking about his vision as a social entrepreneur. And then I have Stephanie Schmidt, the director of Ashoka in charge of Changemaker Alliances program in Europe. And she will be talking about our initiative at Ashoka. Could I please ask you to introduce yourself quickly in one minute? So Jean-Christophe, if you want to start, please go ahead. Hello, everyone. Uh, so I'm very pleased to be with you uh, this afternoon. My name is Jean-Christophe Leger. I am in charge of uh, social innovation for Danone, and uh, uh, I am in charge of a fund named the Ecosystem Fund, uh, which has been created five years ago now, supporting what we name inclusive business model, but I am going to come back on this, I think. And we are in partnership with, uh, we have the great pleasure we, to work with Ashoka in different countries, co-creating those inclusive business models that will come back on, on later on. Great, thank you. Miguel, if you want to introduce yourself briefly, please. Hi, uh, my name is Miguel Neiva. I'm from Porto, Portugal. I'm a graphic designer and I create a code to promote the inclusion of in the society to the colorblind people, a code in the process with a, a symbol to represent the primary colors. And nowadays they use the code in different products in different countries. Great, thank you. And Stephanie, please could you introduce yourself? Hello everyone, I'm Stephanie Schmidt. I'm working with Ashoka on a program that we call Changemaker Alliances. Um, I've been with Ashoka for 10 years now, starting in uh, Washington DC on this initiative, working in, uh, on the implementation of uh, co-creation project in Mexico, and since a year and a half working in Europe to launch this new program. So for me, it has been a, a topic that's very close to my heart. When I graduated from business school uh, many years ago now, I was very frustrated to see that there was very little and few bridges between the social and the business sector. And uh, this is what Ashoka is trying to address with uh, several of our partners. Sort of, it's becoming um, it's social and business cooperation is a strategic priority for us. As uh, social entrepreneurship was very new 30 years ago, we feel that social and business cooperation is still very uh, recent and an emerging trend that we want to reinforce. Thank you very much. Um, so Jean-Christophe, I'd like to ask you uh, to tell us a little bit more about the Ecosystem Fund and how Danone has been involved with that, please. Okay. Um, so uh, this Ecosystem Fund is an endowment fund um, of 100 million euro uh, initial grant, 100% uh, funded by Danone, and it has been created in the middle of the uh, subprime crisis, um, thinking that unfortunately the financial crisis will end up with a, a, a significant economic crisis and social crisis. And that Danone as a socially responsible company but also in an entrepreneurship type of spirit has to take 
uh, and a, uh, the lead on uh, reinforcing, consolidating the small uh, local players um, of its ecosystem. Uh, because we are working uh, in an interdependent way with a, a lot of uh, uh, small entrepreneurs all around the world, uh, small farmers, small distributors, um, and that this crisis could put them into danger. Um, and that uh, the things that at the end uh, could also put our business model into danger because we are in this relationship of in interdependency. So we decided to, to put, um, to walk the talk and, and, and to put this 100 million euro um, um, aside on the specific uh, fund with a specific governance. Uh, to co-create uh, with a, a subsidiary of Danone and a non-for-profit organization project that will support all the small actors. Um, we do operate today in four main areas. We have um, uh, half of the program today as we have, uh, we are in the middle of the bridge. Huh? We invest, uh, we donate, sorry, something like 46 million euros so far um, on 48 uh, uh, ongoing initiatives all around the world. So half of those um, uh, initiatives today are related to uh, uh, farmers, small farmers, um, farmers of subsistence, family farms, uh, on milk uh, farmers, and also fruit producers. Um, those people today are stuck into uh, a middleman relationship that is not um, healthy and not helping them to valorize their production um, uh, enough to leave and to grow. Um, so we help them to unite, uh, to organize into mainly cooperative model. Um, we support family farms with proper access to credit, to technologies, to expertise for them to uh, develop their own uh, farming. And uh, um, the result of this uh, program today is that we managed to uh, embark some of our subsidiaries daring to source their milk in a different way um, with players that usually are considered as um, difficult to work with because of the productivity and the quality. So um, good news is, yes, it's possible for a large company like us with a high level of food safety um, to uh, organize its sourcing strategy with farmers of subsistence or with small farmers. Um, the second area where we do operate is around micro distribution. Um, and uh, this is an opportunity for us to uh, provide social inclusion opportunities to people looking for jobs. Um, so socially excluded people who basically either don't have access to the proper level of education or uh, uh, basically are living in area where there is no jobs. So um, we build up specific distribution network uh, where we implement skills for life program and sales training program uh, to create a micro, micro depot or, my or small shop or door to door sales force on which we will guarantee this uh, 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 on one hand uh, social output uh, around this employability and minimum social benefit. You know that there is a lot of street vendors who basically don't have access to decent condition of work. Um, and on the other hand, it helps Danone to uh, distribute its product in areas where we usually large corporations don't go, uh, adding on top of this uh, a clear service of uh, nutrition education. Uh, to reinforce the uh, uh, impact of healthy nutrition on, on, on your well-being. The third area of cooperation is with uh, caregivers. Um, we have a baby division and uh, medical division 
and we're working towards the well-growing and well-aging uh, 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 value creation. And to do so, we are building partnership with uh, caring services, uh, uh, entrepreneurs, or caring uh, uh, professionals uh, who, in some country, uh, are not professionalized, or uh, in some other country, are needing support to create their own business. Um, so basically, working with, uh, for example, uh, uh, kindergarten, um, nursery, uh, in area where again it's difficult to uh, find this type of uh, services. Um, working with the uh, uh, house of elderly with caregivers to introduce physical activity um, and, and nutrition program. Um, so we create jobs there and as well um, and on the other hand we're providing services that are important for the uh, well-being of our consumer attached to the nutrition offer that Danone can do. Uh, the third area, uh, sorry, the fourth area is about recycling. Uh, you have today about 20 million waste pickers uh, around the world that they are living in an informal uh, economy, um, also with a very, very difficult working condition and low valorization of their work. Um, Danone is a company that is trying to improve its packaging uh, with recyclable materials. 25% um, of our uh, uh, plastic water, mineral water, are uh, uh, using, uh, are made with uh, recyclable materials, PET. And so therefore, our ambition here is to have what we name socially responsible PET, our PET, recycled PET. So we help waste pickers in four different countries. Um, so so far, uh, the fund has been uh, support of the ambition around this 46 million uh, euro uh, uh, donation to empowered socially empowered professionally empowered 50,000 uh, uh, people. Uh, we reach around 20,000. Um, among the 20,000, we have 3,000 job creation. The other 17,000 are basically job consolidation or uh, 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 people empowerment. Um, and um, we uh, build all this very nice initiative with um, 40, a network of 40 non for profit organizations. And I'm very uh, happy to, to 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 be with you today because um, we have important partnership with Ashoka um, uh, in Mexico uh, today around the recycling uh, program Pepenadores in Mexicali and around the uh, uh, distribution initiative in Mexico mm -hmm. and name Semilla and last but not least is a program in Egypt uh, with also a healthy distribution network with. Uh, um, uh, nutrition ambassadors, uh, women mainly, uh, uh, helping to reach rural area. Great, thank you very much. Um, so before I ask you more questions, I'd like to hear about Miguel as well and um, hear about his project uh, related to Color Ad. So Miguel, can you tell us a little bit how Color Ad uh, works, please, so that we can get the social entrepreneur's uh, perspective to this? Thank you. Okay. Uh, before I have to, to explain what is Colorado and I, I put a, a slide to, to represent how, how can this project can transport a new kind of language to all the world. I'm a graphic designer and I, I developed this project uh, in a research during eight years and uh, I made uh, uh, a lot of uh, a big program with the doctors and with the color color blind people to understand what they uh, what they feel when the color is a fact to identification to the talking about three people can identify the correct colors and after I, I developed all this research and create a code with three symbols, three, three, three simple symbols who represent the three primary colors and in the same way we mix the colors to obtain the other colors like for example the yellow 
and red, you, you obtain the orange color, you use the symbol of the yellow, the symbol of the red, and you have the symbol of the orange. And this is a, a very simple process, a, a very simple language, and it's a, a universal language. And in the researching, uh, 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 repair is nothing exists before, because no one who cares, for example, in the good worlds, of course, uh, about the, the colorblind people. And after all this, this process, uh, I, I try to put this new language in the whole world, because it's not in, only in Portugal exists colorblind people, it's not in Portugal the, the problems to integrate in the society is difficult for colorblind people. We are talking about 41% of the colorblind they have uh, difficult to integrate in society. 91% need help to choose the clothes in the shop and a lot of problems, a lot of handicaps for, for, for those people. And who, who we create, uh, because I, I, I speak in plural now, because I have to create a team to work with me to guarantee the good process to leave this project for, for, to, to the world. And what what we create? We create uh, a different clusters to guarantee the good implementation, the good testing of this project, and we use we use Portugal as like a cluster to to guarantee the correct implementation in different areas. Uh, for example, I, I I can show you uh, the the this the slide again and. Uh, Sorry, sorry, sorry. And I can show the, the slide again. You can see in the in the in the right side different products with the, when the code is already in used color red, uh, color pencils, for example, textiles, uh, tags of textiles, uh, metros, maps. It's a lot of of uh, supports when the code is already in used and. Uh, talking about the, the co-creation model, we create, uh, I don't know if the right uh, words, but we create a social business model and this process uh, works in the, the, this way, for example, a, a, small a small company pay a small fee for use the code, a big company pay a big fee for use the code and this is uh, equal for everyone. It's not exclusive for uh, it's not exclusive for anyone, and we guarantee that the companies can use the code in their product. This is, for example, a box of pencils. Uh, they guarantee innovation. They guarantee a new profits for their products because they have a new kind of language, an inclusive language, and for us is important because they bring to the society the social value because they include in society all the kids, for example, in that case of the color pencils, the, the good interpretation of the colors without discrimination. And they know better than us uh, what is your public, your client, and they, they made the, all the communication about this concept, not only in the color pencils, but for example, there exists in the world more than 2.3 million of textiles with the text uh, with the, the color and a lot of uh, a lot of products and to guarantee the, the correct impact of this project we, we prepare a transversal uh, support in Portugal here in Portugal with the different companies or different entities to guarantee to the color one can wake up in the morning and go to sleep at the night and in the same part of the day can have a contact with this code. For us it's important because we know at, uh, at this moment the importance of this tool, the, 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 the good, uh, the good um, solution of this tool because not only in the schools, not only in the transports, not only in the hospitals, not only in the textiles or in stamps or in the games or in the, the color pencils. And with this process we create here in Portugal, like as a cluster, we, cr we create a model 
to guarantee the good exportation or a systemic exportation of this concept. I, I believe, and uh, I believe you can, we can change the world, but we can change the world not only in our town, I, we need to change in the old world. And these clusters we create here in Portugal, now you, we can guarantee the process in different countries. Nowadays, we have with only this, only this know-how we guarantee with these tests, the, col the color red coat is already in use in Japan, in the United Kingdom, in the United States, in Canada, in Spain, in Brazil, in Holland, in different countries. With a systemic process, we can reproduce for the other countries. And for the companies, not only with the social responsibility, they transport with, the, with these products because they use the code, uh, they can sell more. For example, this company is a Portuguese company, it's the only one company who produce color pencils in the Peninsula of America. Nowadays they export color pencils for more than 20 countries. The textiles companies export for a lot of countries with social value and with uh, a profit for uh, in their products. But not only the, pros the profits, but the, the social value too. I, I believe the, the the, the married the hedge, for example, of with the companies of the second sector and the third sector is the solution to guarantee a better world for, for all and we have the mission to bring the color forward for all the people. Uh, I, I don't know if I explain everything, but if you have more questions about uh, this, this concept, ask Thank you, Miguel. Um, I actually have a question now that you're talking about social value. Is there an ambulance that I hear on your side? Yes, on our side. <laughs> um, so before I ask you more questions, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna ask a question to Stephanie now and ask Stephanie to talk a little bit about why Ashoka is talking about social and business co-creation. Okay, maybe we lost Stephanie. So Miguel, um, I'm going to continue and ask you my second question now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so Miguel, now that you were talking about um, social impact, so one of the main questions and main worry about social entrepreneurs is that they're not comfortable working with business partners um, and companies that really look for business opportunities. How did you feel about that when you start your project and how did you balance that? Do you think they could be win-win partnerships? Yes, it's the, the, the solutions only result with win-win results. And we have a, a, another good uh, opportunity in this situation because the colorblind people don't have to pay anything for benefit to the code because they, they have in the products and the products don't have, don't have uh, a high price for, for with the code because we want the code in all the products to guarantee inclusion without discrimination. And colorblind don't have to pay anything and they don't need to assume their condition. This is the, the, not, the our first rule, including without discrimination. And in parallel we have a program to schools. This is a completely pro bono program to guarantee it the right uh, process in the schools, not only in the in the schools manuals, but uh, in the li school libraries, because the color is important to identify different thematics of the books is, and uh, the recommendation of UNESCO, the CDU, the color is a fact for a different kind of uh, of thematics, and we we have. Uh, with the NGO I create, Colored.Social, uh, a program, and we give to all the kids in the schools a, a, a bag, a color pencils, a book for uh, with the different drawings to, to paint, to guarantee the inclusion, the accessibility for all, and uh, to eliminate the bullying, because the, 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 the little child, the colorblind child, is very vulnerable to the to, to bullying. 
this program of, of the NGO is support for the part or a little part of the licenses the companies pay not only have a profit a good profit in their products they transport the social innovation in those packages in those products and they support to NGO to bring the color ads code to the schools this is the program of this this project Great, thanks. How do you start working with the big companies? What are the challenges and how did you do it? Uh, first of all, we, we have, this is a pure innovation. Before color red, nothing exists for colorblind people. Uh, and in that case, we, in, like in the old times of the kings, they need to, to have uh, uh, someone to prove the, the food before the king uh, hits the food. and. We we have to prepare or to testing this project with the Portuguese companies, not only the small companies but the big companies here in Portugal. And after that, we create a model to reproduce all this program for the biggest companies in the world. Is different. I go to, for example, to Metro of London and and said, hey, I have a, a good idea to identify the colors for the colorblind people and they ask me and how can you put the symbols in the maps and I say I don't know and to, 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 to guarantee the good solution we test the project here in Portugal and now we are prepared for big companies we are prepared for big uh, entities because we have the solution we have the program to guarantee the correct identification of the textiles for example we prepare all the Penton textiles catalog and with a, a small um, uh, a small program to guarantee the correct implementation in the in the labels without uh, cook, uh, um, without um, an, um, a big price of uh, the final product for example and this is the, the, the cluster I, I, I told you a, a few min minutes. This is the solution to guarantee not only the good idea, but the implementation of the good idea. Now we have the program to prepare. And for example, we are talking with, uh, um, with uh, Danone, for example, we are preparing all the process to the uh, alimentation area because they are uh, a traffic light, a nutritional traffic light, and we, we're trying to bring the color for for all, not only for can understand the color, but for all with the symbols in the in the right side. Great, thank you very much. Um, I now see that Stephanie is back online, so uh, I'd love to hear a little bit about Stephanie. Um, so Stephanie, if you could tell us more about what Ashoka is doing around co-creation, that would be great. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Hi, everyone. I hope that uh, you can hear me now. Caroline, can you wave? Yeah, okay, great. Um, so I wanted to start actually by uh, talking a bit by why, what we mean by social and business co-creation. You may wonder what is the, you know, the common thread between uh, a milk sourcing project uh, in, involving Danone and uh, the project that uh, Miguel was describing with, uh, with color pencil. So bear with me, I will try to um, share my screen and um, and show um, a little slide um, and basically which is the the key criteria of what we mean by social and business uh, co-creation. Um, so basically, the first the first sort of key criteria is does it involve at least one social mission organization and one company collaborating on a joint project. Um, so this is, you know, organization that, that tear down the, you know, sometimes the barriers that exist between different sectors to work together. Um, the, the second criteria that to us is very important is that is there, um, you know, a, a contribution of complementary, distinct and essential expertise from the social mission organization and from the company um, to go beyond what each individual company or organization could have done alone. And uh, what we look at is that does it go beyond uh, funding only? 
um, to again sort of to um, to involve sort of key expertise from the business sector and the social sector. That's very uh, distinct expertise. The third um, criteria that we look at is, of course, the generation of social impact, and this is why Ashoka has been involved in that, and Ashoka is interested. I mean, we definitely look at new solutions or new approaches to address societal uh, challenges, like uh, lack of uh, access to healthcare services, lack of um, access to decent housing, lack of access to uh, you know being able to see colors and and all of the challenges that we face every day and then the last uh, point that i wanted to mention is that the link to the core mission um, or the core business of the partners that are involved and this is a very important criteria that basically distinguishes um, social and business cooperation from a smart or um, you know a, a very um, nice social business partnership and I think that the you know the importance the strategic importance it can have for a company uh, whether it means um, you know new way of sourcing product or a new way of opening markets like the pencil company Miguel was talking about but something that's that's meaningful and uh, important and strategic for the business so that it's also a sustainable approach that has all of you know the chances to um, um, to scale up and to remain over time, sort of beyond a very punctual uh, project. So let me try and get get back <laughs> on the on the screen. Um, just bear with me. Yes, I think I'm I'm back now with you. Um, Hello, yes, and I'm, I'm, I hope I'm back with you. Yes, okay, I see <laughs> Caroline waving. Thank you, Caroline. Um, and, you know, why, why do you think is, is, is important, this social and business cooperation? I mean, basically, we believe that the world would be very, very different um, if most companies and most social organizations were sort of co-creating and adopting new ways of working together. I mean, if we look at it, from um, the society perspective, again, we are facing sort of huge uh, societal challenges, whether in France uh, or in Europe, over you know 20 million poor people, sort of uh, people living in poverty, um, millions facing issues like obesity or facing issues like lack of access to energy to warm their homes, and we we just clearly see that. Um, no uh, player, whether it's a company, a, a very smart social entrepreneur, a public organization can face these issues and we need to go beyond again sort of these, uh, these silos and, and barriers. If we look at it from uh, the perspective of the social entrepreneur, what's very new here is that you know how can a social entrepreneur work with a business or leverage the capacity of a, of a corporation to go beyond and really sort of what we've seen for social entrepreneurs is that scaling is the name of the game this is you know the the big aspiration of social entrepreneurs who uh, you know strive every day to go beyond to uh, reach out more people and we all know that you know corporations are the big giant and, you know the big elephants in these worlds in terms of their economic power. So imagine if uh, you know most corporations were using even you know two percent or three percent of their capacity to generate uh, social impact while doing business. I mean this would have a huge impact in the world. And here we are talking about you know capacity like research and development, like distribution channel, like creating new products. Uh, you know, investing so capacities that are very different from the from the social uh, entrepreneurs and social organization more generally um, sort of uh, uh, strengths and, and expertise. And lastly, if we look at it, um, you know, from the the company perspective, um, and I think what we we have heard is that it definitely brings up. Um, new business opportunities as well in terms of you know innovating uh, business models in terms of accessing new markets in addition of course to being a responsible corporate citizen and to engaging um, employees sort of in very different ways because I think there's there's nothing uh, more exciting for a corporate employee who may be a, a marketing manager or you know sourcing director to discover that he or she 
can be a very uh, you know professional um, employee and at the same time sort of be a change maker sort of contribute to uh, to change making uh, in the world and from the from the company perspective we see that the social entrepreneurs bring uh, very different assets if I can say like the you know the, the mere fact that social entrepreneurs focus on market failures if I can say so no they they just have an eye to see uh, you know what products what service are not being made available to uh, do a certain uh, you know portion of the population and we try very creatively to come up with uh, you know new approaches to to fill this gap but often they may you know they face um, limited resources which is which is good in a way because it sort of uh, you know fosters creativity and how to work on a shoestring budget how to uh, you know reduce the cost of this product or service as much as possible so that as many people could have access to it uh, but um, again sort of the you know the scale is not uh, is often not there and this is why we have this uh, this complementarity um, so again, at Ashoka, we see, we see this as a as a new trend, as something that's uh, still relatively um, emerging, and uh, and why? Because I mean, there are definitely barriers, like uh, you know, different visions of the world, uh, different you know ideologies sometimes that could come uh, across the way, but just you know the the simple fact that. Uh, most corporations and social entrepreneurs, social organizations just operate in, in very different spheres and just have not many opportunities to meet, uh, to uh, get to know what the other is doing and how they could work together. So the, 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 the lack of you know, meeting opportunities and sharing opportunities is also um, definitely uh, uh, one of the, the obstacles. And the third one is, uh, is probably sort of you know um, the need for sort of more entrepreneurship and innovation in uh, you know in the business work or in uh, in public uh, institution as well, and you know one of the the project that we have launched to um, to address this issue and basically to try to multiply you know social and business cooperation is uh, the competition that we that we launched um, about two months ago and that uh, will end on April 10th. And this competition aim at identifying sort of outstanding co-creation projects in Europe, sort of projects between companies and social organization and possibly sort of uh, you know public uh, players as well that have an impact in Europe. And the goal is to identify them, to give them visibility because it's important to inspire other also to try and 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 uh, and find ways uh, to explore the possibilities, the opportunities of, of cooperation in their own organization, um, and then to support these emerging projects so that they can go beyond. And we really believe in the the opportunity of you know um, sharing, sort of talking about the similar challenges that the organization may face, and uh, you know also. Um, Join forces to find sort of new tools, um, new resources to go beyond. So I will just uh, stop here because I'm sure that Caroline has some questions for um, our colleagues from then on and uh, color add. Thank you very much, Stephanie. Um, yes, I'd like to start with a question for Jean Christophe actually. So, talking about the challenges, um, what are the challenges that you see? Um, for co-creation in companies like Danone, but also what are the key opportunities that you might see? Um, I will start with the key opportunities, if you don't mind. Um, I think that Stephanie mentioned some of them already. Um, co-creation is an opportunity of uh, uh, sharing a different type of point of view and in enriching a solution to be more sustainable because at the end um, if, you had, if, you, if you are part of the solution you, you can't sustain the solution by itself so by gathering the different type of uh, vision uh, the different type, the complementarity of, of expertise you have a, a, a complete answer to, to the challenge you have to address um, second, there is a complementarity of network. Um, in fact, uh, non-for-profit organizations uh, have some access to, to some institution, um, local authorities, 
uh, even the, the community themselves, that, that the private corporation like ours can't uh, 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 get by its own. And from our side, we may have access to a bank, to uh, uh, business suppliers um, that uh, basically non-for-profit won't, won't get uh, so easily um, if they don't partner with organizations like ours. So complementarity of point of view, complementarity of, of network, um, and basically at the end, um, I would say also um, complementarity of, of, of people mindset. I'm, I'm step by step. This is amazing to, to see that um, in non-for-profit organization you have entrepreneur spirit, and in in uh, for-profit organization you have also as well this development. Uh, type of ambition uh, going beyond the traditional business output, but so far uh, the people are, are are basically different, and this is this diversity of people that at the end is is making the process extremely uh, fun and and valuable. Um, the challenges uh, could come from. Uh, as you can imagine, uh, diversity may bring some complexity, and it's not so easy to align quickly and make compromise, to be honest with you. So there is a, a, a need that uh, no one is right in this process. Everyone is right. I mean, uh, we need to compromise all the time keeping the friction between the organization, but there is a need to compromise, no doubt about this, uh, in terms of uh, uh, time perspective, in terms of uh, performance, what we name performance, in terms of uh, uh, way of doing things. Um, so it is important that um, you have also the spirit of, of, of compromising, keeping uh, your own values when you think that uh, 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 there is a danger that you, you, your organization is, is uh, 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 moving away from its, its duty. Um, there is a lack of legal entity to operate this co-creation, to be honest with you. Um, do you have to build a specific uh, uh, organization where the people will gather and, and will basically uh, uh, be all together accountable um, there is not so much uh, example of hybrid type of, of um, companies. You, we're talking a lot about social entrepreneur on one hand. We're talking a lot about uh, a for-profit traditional organization. We're talking about NGOs. But uh, um, in the future, uh, it might be very interesting to see where you can have step-by-step um, -step open governance and this is what is happening in, in most of the company today, where you welcome not only as advisory board member, but much more so as as, as decision maker, um, uh, different type of stakeholders, um, and making sure that the, this group who decided to, to join the effort uh, uh, are all together accountable of, of the uh, activity that they decided to support. Um, uh, last but not least, um, I think knowing knowing each other is, is is taking is taking time. You the program by itself that you you may build together is taking time, but you have to step by step build up this trust. You need uh, uh, to 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 invest into uh, uh, knowing the organization you're partnering with, daring to to participate. Uh, 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 to some initiatives that are uh, under the responsibility of your partner. So yes, it's taking time. It's a challenge uh, by itself. Um, but this is how you build a robust uh, type of co-creation uh, uh, approach. Great. Thank you very much. And actually, now that you're talking about the structure in place, it's true that it's, um, it's often a challenge. And I'm wondering if Miguel could tell us a bit more about how in practice he's been building a structure with his partners. Um, so it'd be really interesting to hear about the hybrid solution that you put in place and how you're managing the relationship with the partner in practice. Yeah, uh, first of all, I, I agree, totally agree with uh, with uh, Jean-Christophe because 
I, I believe in chair value and the win-win with the, between the social and the, and the business. And this is the reality, and I shown uh, the, the slide again. You can see there the companies, some examples, not the all, only these examples. We have to more than 200 and, uh, and, uh, and different supports. But you can see there the color pencils about two, uh, more than two thousands and color pencils, 2.3 million. Uh, 23 millions of clothes, the metro state, the maps, etc., etc., and the, the the important in this in this situation for us, and the, the most interesting in this project, not only the, the the universality of this new language of this kind of language, but we can work with co-creation with different sectors. And the, all the companies, not only the transports, the health, the textiles, the food, the school material, uh, different ambits of different camp, uh, companies and entities, we can work with all of them in this process of co-creation. I believe we can change uh, the, the, the society, the, 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 the reality at this moment alone, I, I believe, and it's more quickly to, to find the goal, and we have the, the goal to go bring the color to 2.3 millions of people in the world with the partners. And our partners is the companies, with, with not the, the business of the, our partners, but the, the social value they transport on their products. And this is the, the way we made with the, all these partners, and uh, all these companies, all these entities, when the color is a fact of communication, and I believe in this in this way, and I believe that that w this way is the more quickly way to 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 guarantee this this process, the good results of this this process of co creation. Okay, thank you very much. And actually a question for Stephanie. Uh, what is Ashoka's experience in working as a kind of a bridge builder between the social and the business sector? Is there any specific examples that you have a very successful co-creation that have built and put in place a structure? Um, maybe the one in, with Danan or something else? Yes, uh, we, uh, I mean it's always a, a very intense experience and uh, and a very interesting one. Uh, I think I would echo what uh, what Jean Christophe and uh, and Miguel were saying in terms of um, I think the, the the question. I mean, two key um, essentials are uh, the trust on one side, and you know, trust is uh, you know taking time to acquire. This is not from the first day, but you know, this is something that's being built. And um, the second one is uh, is believing, you know, from uh, from one's guts that uh, this win win is possible. And and too often we still see that um, either you know people think that uh, it's necessarily a zero sum game. You know, if somebody wins, then the other loses, and they uh, they don't believe in this sort of you know being able to uh, to achieve a greater impact together. Um, or you know, or, or we see that um, you know. Especially from you know the, the social sector, you know partnering with the company is still somehow taboo. And uh, you know we see and recently speaking to a to a social entrepreneur who is himself you know engaged in very interesting partnership. Then he was telling to me that you know he would never speak about this collaboration in public in front of other social organization because he's just you know afraid of uh, you know being criticized and and by his peers. So this is something that. You know, it's still sort of uh, not very openly shared, and and yeah, there's still a, a taboo around it. Um, so I think that you know, breaking these, um, you know, the, these, or just building uh, the trust and and uh, working on the win-win, and the definition of, of you know, basically how will the the collaboration be measured? Um, because you know, it's not only just nice to be together, but again, we want to you know be able to 
reach um, and, and, and advance um, social indicators and economic indicators. So one of the, I, I think that the key defining moment, for example, when we uh, worked on the, the recycling projects that in, in Mexico that Jean-Christophe mentioned earlier was this definition of what do we want to achieve in terms of, you know, uh, for the businesses involved, um, in terms of the, you know, sourcing volumes of PET that they wanted to get, but also what do we want to, what's the, the social objective, and and what is the, you know, the key of the social issue we want to address. Is it, uh, and, and, and in this case, this was really sort of the, the leadership issue in the recycling sector in Mexico that's a very uh, informal one. So, um, I mean, of course, each, um, you know, each collaboration, each partnership is, is different um, and, uh, again, sort of is very uh, dependent on where does the organization come from, what's the, you know, the, the DNA of the organization, how comfortable are they with this uh, hybridation, but um, what we see also is that today, uh, at the exception of you know few companies like Danone who are starting to uh, you know have a, a specific governance and structure uh, for these projects internally, then many of these projects are still um, or still depend a lot on individuals and and passionate individuals, entrepreneurs, intrapreneurs who will you know again do everything they do to um, to to develop and and. Um, and defend these projects, but I think the next challenge is to institutionalize um, these, this way of you know doing business or this way of scaling up a social innovation in many more organizations. Thank you very much, Stephanie. Um, Jean-Christophe, actually a question about how do you balance those business benefits uh, with the social impact of your project? Has this been a challenge within Danone? Um, how do we balance? Uh, I th think um, this question of interdependency is is the the, the answer. Um, there is no business benefit without social benefit, and there won't be any social benefit without the business. So the, it, it it is um, happening especially on on this type of of uh, project by itself. Um, if you give up on one aspect, you will fail on the other. Um, but what I want to say on top of that is, first of all, let's make sure that um, you, we, we can challenge the business benefit by itself for an organization like ours. Um, we're talking more and more about what we name competitive advantage. Uh, because what we do is for the long term. Of course, uh, we can access to a, a good quality of milk um, if we invest on, on, on those small farmers. Um, yes, we can sell more product uh, 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 thanks to this type of, of social inclusion vendors program. Um, we can access to PET, uh, securing uh, access to, 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 to plastic bottle thanks to partnership with my speaker. But at the end, um, the impact on the bottom line and top line is one of the aspects of the competitive advantage that you, you, you build. It is very difficult uh, to, to, to assess this competitive advantage uh, when you talk about the license to operate, when you talk about uh, the reputation of the company, when you talk about the attractiveness of, of your organization for talent. Uh, to join when you talk about the, the, the engagement of your employee. But those are things uh, that step by step we try to, to, to put value behind. And, and I can guarantee that what is amazing when you started to, to, to see this type of program uh, with your business people, you are starting to transform their own perception of their business performance. They realize in somehow, of course, um, and, and and I don't want to lie, we're all very, very focused on short-term short result today, um, especially in the environment that, that is, is, is under tension um, from an economic standpoint. But I have the chance to, to, to work with general managers of CBUs and uh, project manager who really believe in, in somehow that beyond the, the social uh, 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 value that they can generate onto this program, they clearly challenge their traditional 
perception of what was business uh, uh, performance. And if you see the competitive advantage, which is roughly based on the return on investment by doing something good for my stakeholders, I will have in return a value, a business value. I, my perception is that you are building a new type of business entrepreneur who are uh, uh, much more accountable for the long-term uh, robustness of the business they build. They're not here for a year to bring a turnover, a profitability, a, 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 a free cash flow uh, 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 result only. They are here to build a company which will sustain. And so, um, again, with this type of new business vision, I think that at the end, the social and the economic, uh, the social and even the environment output will come by themselves and will all the time um, guarantee this, this, this balance uh, because you see your business into a different perspective. And, and sorry, last but not least, uh, how do you guarantee? But you guarantee because you have people like Ashoka on board. At the end, uh, I, am, I am always saying, get ready for fight. I mean, this is good fun. Um, I am not asking, uh, uh, and I know that I can't ask this to Ashoka <laughs> to agree all what we do. I mean, at a certain point, there are guys going to stand up and say, but, 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 John Christophe, you're not doing the right thing. And it, it's, it's, this is, this is the beauty of, of co-creation in the end. Huh? It's, it's the, those people will stand for and, 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 and make you come back on the, on the value, social value creation if you forget. <laughs> Great, thanks. And actually, on a really practical note, how do you start such a project in a big company like Danone? Like, is there any practical tips that you can give to people to get started? Um, you were talking about, and, and, and Miguel is an, exa <laughs> an example, you need leaders. You need people with leadership. Uh, you need believers, you need entrepreneurs, and, and uh, it always starts, uh, honestly speaking, by a, a how you say that a, a, a meeting where where two two or three people all together four people they, they they started to get acquainted to know each other to trust each other and they show their leadership. Um, Great. I, I think it's very important to mention this this idea of of um, leadership beyond all this type of initiative. And it's a specific leadership, by the way. Huh? It's, it's a question not only of believers, it's a question of re resilience. It's a question of people uh, at the same time detail-oriented and strategic thinking, really, because being able to see your business value creation in different mindset, believe me, you need to have a certain type of maturity. Um, Thanks. We, have, we actually have two minutes left. Oh, so. sorry. So no, so how do you start? You start by analysis simply what is at stake in the country where you do operate and think how you can contribute to this inclusive new type of business model. Uh, I have, there is a lot of small farmers, well, I have to support them because it's a question of common sense. So I am starting to analyze what is at, at stake in the country and from this, step by step, by gathering the people from the non-for-profit and the people from the CBU, we are building up the, 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 the project. And we always start, one, sorry, last word, by the pilot. Just think big, no doubt about this. We have to think big if we want to be change maker. But start always with pilot from which you can learn. Great, thank you so much. Miguel, do you want to add something in one minute that summarize this point as well? Yes. <clears throat> uh, I think this process, the co-creation process, uh, guarantee with a, a, a quickly response uh, uh, not only the win-win, as uh, Christopher talked, uh, the, benef the, the business benefits and the social benefits, but I, I believe in three win-win-win. The company is the social benefits, the, so the business benefits, and in the, the, the case of color red, the color blind people benefits. I think all win in this process. And only with this, this 
co-creation, this concept of addition, like as color red, addition the colors or the, the symbols, the additions of the companies and the business companies with the social camp enterprise or organizations can guarantee a better, inclusive, and a, a, bet, a good accessibility for all with all the this Thanks a lot. Um, we'll have to finish now, but Stephanie will say one last word on the co-creation competition. So please, everyone, apply online. Hi. Yeah. Just uh, I wanted to just to end by saying that uh, I mean it's very inspiring to see cases like uh, you know Danon and Colorado. But what we want and to see is actually you know cooperation multiplying in every sector to see how it could apply to you know employment, healthcare, nutrition. You know in every country, in every sector. So I just want to encourage you to take uh, you know some uh, contribution to the to the change makers competition. So it's on www.changemakers.com slash co dash creation. Uh, you can all play a role by participating yourself, by you know identifying projects and nominating them to participate, or just by you know checking what's happening in the you know on Twitter or social media and just spreading the word. So thank you. Thank you very much everyone for joining today. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.